Well, National Director of Public Prosecutions, Shamila Batoy, promised to crack the whip on corruption when she took over back in 2019. But now people have raised questions about the performance of the state prosecution agency. They claim that some cases should have reached prosecution stage by now. So for more on this, we're now joined by Gareth Newham from the Institute for Security Studies. And Gareth, thank you so much for making time to speak to me this morning about this. And good morning to you. Um, indeed, I think all corners of South Africa has been questioning the state of, you know, the NPA and how they're handling uh, certain cases. But when it comes to the Department of Correctional Service and Justice, uh, where do you think uh, lied the, wh where was the last straw, I think, that broke the camel's back uh, that led to the minister, you know, inquiring and ordering that Section 33 inquiry on the NPA? Well, I think it had to do with the outcry about the failure of the Nulani case, where the judge dismissed um, all the charges against the defendants and acquitted one of them. And of course, this was the first big state capture case to be enrolled in the courts. And there was a lot of focus on it, a lot of attention on it, a lot of expectations. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the case was dismissed by the judge. So. The minister wants to be seen to be doing something, and so he's ordered an inquiry into that. And I think that'll give us a lot of information about what went wrong there and what needs to happen to ensure that kind of situation doesn't reoccur. Um, I know the MPA are appealing that judgment. We'll see if there's any benefit for, from that. But also know that since that case was enrolled, um, mm. which is quite a while ago, there's been a change in the methodology in, from the investigative directorate in how they deal with these cases with a lot more external uh, independent advocates also looking at these cases before they get enrolled. So hopefully uh, they've really taken sufficient action to ensure that kind of situation doesn't occur again. But again, with all court cases, with all criminal trials, you never know what's going to happen on the stand. You might have a very good case on paper, uh, but when it gets to the cross-examination of witnesses and what happens in the courtroom, you can have a very uh, different outcome. Yeah, you mentioned the investigative directorate, and, and I'm, I'm reminded of what Andrea uh, Johnson, the head of the ID, said during a TV interview that there were investigative shortcomings at the NPA. And one would think that, um, Gareth, with this particular case, it was a, a, a winnable case, really, where, you know, the, the NPA were, of course, entrusted to find out where exactly that 25 million rand uh, was going to from the department uh, out in the Free State uh, province. So where do you think those investigations of shortcomings, as per the head of the ID mentioned, where do you think they came from? Where were those gaps? Well, the judge herself in that new line of case uh, was actually far more harsh on the Hawks investigators who were tasked with gathering evidence for the case than she was actually against the NPA prosecutors. The prosecutors can only work with what evidence they have before them, and that's uh, you know from the police and detectives, or whether it's a complex corruption case, then it'll come from the Hawks. There certainly are a lot of questions to be asked about the investigators uh, that were put on this case. Um, we do know that the Hawks were severely um, undercapacitated and weakened uh, during the state capture years, particularly under their former head, Bernie Intlameza, where he appointed people into key positions who didn't have the necessary skills, uh, integrity, or ability to mm -hmm. investigate certain cases. That seems to be the case here. So those. Uh, that damage is very clear in this case because those detectives uh, were appointed to their positions in handling these cases under that period when there was a very clear situation in which the head of the NPA was uh, sort of the orcs, um, was not there to actually prosecute state capture cases that involved high level polit politicians, which we saw nothing happening there for years. Yeah. These cases only started moving after 2019. So, I mean, even since then, and it goes back to the issue of the shortcomings, the independent directorate needs to be a permanent entity. It needs to be able to hire its own staff. Still today, months after it was announced that it would be a permanent entity, entity and that it would have its own uh, its powers enhanced, nothing's happened. So I think there needs to be a lot of focus on if the president and the minister of this country are so keen on tackling complex corruption and high-level political corruption, why are they taking so long to ensure that the investigative directorate in the NPA has the necessary uh, powers and, more importantly, has its own investigators? Because right now it has to second investigators from other organizations, such as the Hawks and the police, who then may go back there or may be removed mm -hmm. of cases at any point. So 
you know, until, they, until, until we see some political action, it's not really going to be much that we can expect from the actual practitioners. The lawyers and the investigators and the heads of these units in the NPA are being hamstrung um, by a very slow movement um, at a political level to, to really ensure that, that these agencies can operate effectively. And yeah, until and we see that movement, we can't expect much more to happen. Right, Gareth, as, actually, as you, as you state your point, I'm reminded of what uh, the judge, the acting judge, Nombumele Logusha, um, had to say, I mean, lambasting the manner in which this uh, Nulani state capture case was even handled alone, amongst other things, accusing it of, uh, you know, the poor quality of state witnesses, uh, the poor manner in which, you know, this case was investigated, amongst others, the fundamental errors committed by investigators. So you could see definitely there were definitely gaps and loopholes uh, that, you know, almost uh, disappointed the acting judge and this coming from the NPA. And one, one wonders two things. How long will this quality of work last for within the NPA? But also, is there any hope whatsoever for real, you know, uh, reform in terms of our criminal justice in our country? Will we ever see prosecution, successful ones at that? Uh, I certainly hope so, like everybody else, that we will see uh, successful prosecutions against very powerful people involved in stealing public money. Um, but, and, and I think that we probably really will. I think that certainly since the Nalani case, which was the first case which was enrolled, I said it some time ago, uh, there's been a change. Uh, the current head of the investigative directorate did not enroll that case. She's been enrolled in a number of other cases last year. There were about nine cases which the NPA titled seminal mm. cases, all big state capture related cases. So let's hope that with the um, new leadership of the investigative directorate in the NPA since last year, that um, we should see improvements. Of course, the proof will be in the pudding. What happens in these cases? Do we see convictions happening? Are people eventually sentenced to prison? Um, that is what people want to see, to set a very clear uh, message. But again, you know, even now, um, the investigative directorate is relatively hamstrung because of the slowness in making yeah. it a permanent entity so that it can do its work. So we've really got to put the focus on where it should be. If you want to see effective criminal justice, um, the only people who can really ensure effective criminal justice are the president, who appoints the ministers that oversee the departments, and then they make sure that those departments are working as effectively as possible, that they have very clear plans of action on how to improve their capabilities, their strategic direction, how they decide to make decisions on cases so that you see improvements in justice across the system, not just in the NPA, but from the police. Um, as we know, in the last decade or so, the ability for the police to solve murders has dropped by 55 percent uh, since 2012, despite their budget being 86 percent bigger. So if the police aren't operating effectively, then you're not going to have many prosecutions. You're not going to really see big reductions of cash and transit heists, armed robberies in people's homes car hijackings, because the police ability to solve robberies, for example, has dropped by 53%, so that only 10% of cases pretty much were solved last year. Now, those 10% then go to the NPA. Mm. But what we need to see is that the police, using their massive resources strategically and effectively so that more than 70% of armed robbery cases get before the courts with enough evidence so that they can put those people in jail and then we'll see crime going down. So right. the NPA are in a strategic position, but they can't control what the police do. And we don't see a plan of action to fix the police, whereas the NPA does have a plan of action to fix itself. But even if it becomes the most highly effective national prosecuting authority in the world, mm. it's going to be hamstrung if it's not getting cases with sufficient evidence to make sure that criminals are convicted and sentenced accordingly. Right. Well, from, from what you're saying, Gareth, I think there are not just gaps in the NPA, but the entire value chain. And as you mentioned, uh, one entity, one agency also depending uh, on another, in this instance, uh, the SAPs. And if they're inefficient, it, it affects the entire value chain. But thank you so much, Gareth Newham, for joining me from the Institute for Security uh, Studies on this uh, uh, conversation regarding, of course, uh, Minister Ronald Lamola of the Department of Correctional Service and uh, Justice uh, ordering Section 33 inquiry uh, into the NPA's handling of the Nulani state capture case.